and today I'm going to show you some of my favorite and most used glassware. I don't really have too many fancy glassware. Most of the things I own are pretty affordable because honestly I'm a bit clumsy and uh, if I own anything expensive I would be really sad if it broke. So everything I show you here today will be relatively easy to find and affordable. Without much ado, let's get started. So with me here, I do have a Manhattan in one of my new cocktail coupes. This is using Punta Mess and Ritten Health 100, and it is absolutely delicious. Let's start out with cocktail coupes. Now these are the stem glassware that are so popularly used in craft cocktail bars. This coupe right here, which is holding my Manhattan. This is a brand new cocktail coupe that I got uh, from a wine store nearby, and the brand is Lemon, like L-E-H-M-A-N-N. -N. This is very beautiful. I love it because the stem is so thin and also the cup size is pretty small. So it perfectly holds like your boozy stirred cocktail without having like a big gap. So the wash line is pretty high. <laughs> this is actually uh, probably my first drink in this coupe. So I haven't used it too much yet, but I already love it. It feels really nice. This one's a little bit pricier. Uh, it was about $35. So I'm going to have to be very careful with this. This was probably my first cocktail glass I ever owned. I purchased this many years ago when it was still relatively uncommon to even find coupes like this being used at bars, uh, much less at home. And I found some cocktail supply shop online. Uh, this is still like my most used cocktail coupe. The bowl size is perfect for most of the drinks that I make. It's about, I believe it's five ounces or five and a half ounces. The shape, everything is really amazing. They've been very sturdy and I keep them in the freezer actually because they're perfect for martinis. The next coupe that I have is this one. This is actually from Crate and Barrel, which is where I actually get a lot of my glassware. I love this one because it has this thin stem and uh, it has this very sleek modern look. However, to be honest, I don't use this one super often just because the bowl size is a little bit too large for most of the things that I make. I really like it uh, when the drinks that I make have a wash line that goes almost to the top. This is just a little bit too big for my liking, although it is beautiful and I love the thin stem. The next cocktail glass that I have is this one here. And this is a bit of like a modernized Nick and Nora glass. One of my friends gifted me a set of these and I love it. I will reach for these whenever I'm not using this. I'm using this maybe like 75% of the time and uh, maybe the other 25% of the time I'm using this one. The next long stem glass that I have here is this one. This one, I believe, comes from the same line as this one. Both of are from Crate and Barrel. And uh, this is actually like a white wine glass, but I absolutely love this for gin and tonics. The bowl size here is just the absolutely perfect size for like a two ounce gin, four ounce tonic garnished with some aromatics and filled with ice. I love the Spanish style gin and tonics that are usually served in uh, stem glasses. And I just love like the round circular shape of this. It's modern and it's just beautiful. Plus the long stem is just absolutely gorgeous. All right, uh, I need us to take a sip of this. Ah, oh, this is so good. So in this one, I used about two ounces of Rittenhouse 100, three quarters ounce of Punta Mess, and like a couple dashes of Angostura bitters. A lot of times I feel like Manhattans are a little sweet for me, so I tend to not make it too often, uh, but I think this is just the perfect ratio and the ingredients that lean on the bitter side. The next set of semi-stem glassware that I have are these two. Both of these are also from Crate and Barrel, and I really just like them because they're unique and they're a little bit medieval-like. Like, I, sometimes I use this one as a wine goblet and it makes me feel very uh, like Game of Thrones-esque. And also I use it for cocktails. Um, both of them have similar volume, this one's slightly larger, but I really love the shape. They photograph really well for Instagram. Finally, I have one more semi-stem glass and it is this one. 
So this is just a brandy snifter. I think traditionally they were designed with a large bowl to enjoy the, your whiff of brandy as you drink it. This is actually the perfect gloss for tiki drinks. So if you ever had those tiki drinks that are so cold, filled with ice, and are frosted over on the outside, a lot of times they are served in these brandy snifters. And this particular one, I think, is just the perfect size of the bowl. I found this one just at a random liquor store, so I'm not exactly sure who makes it. Sometimes they come in a larger size, but I think this is the perfect one uh, for the volume of drinks that I would be making. This is so good. I think I found my perfect Manhattan. Mm. All right, the next one that I'll talk about is this one right here, and this is a highball glass. This is, surprise, surprise, also from Crate and Barrel. This one just has a super heavy base with like an air bubble on the bottom, which I think looks super sophisticated and sleek. And it has a thin edge that doesn't have one of those like rim things. So it feels really nice when you're drinking from it. I love this glass. Next up, let's talk about rock glasses. I am personally a huge fan of like the boozy and stirred drinks. I tend to shy away from most recipes that include citrus. I'll have it sometime, but for the most part, if I'm ever at a bar, my mind goes directly to like the boozy stirred stuff. I would say that maybe at least like 75-80% of the drinks that I make at home are of the boozy and stirred variety, oftentimes served in a rocks glass. So let's talk about my most used glasses. Like I said, I don't have anything super expensive. I don't have any crystal glasses. All of these are just for everyday drinking and you know they're they're great. One of the things I do look for in glassware is that it doesn't have a seam. Sometimes when you're looking at glassware, you'll find that especially the cheap glassware will have a seam down the middle. So there'll be like an actual line down the middle. And that just comes from the way that the glass is like machine manufactured. So I try to stay away from glassware that has that. I feel like that just looks really cheap. So the first one that I have is this one. This is one of my most commonly photographed glasses uh, on Instagram. And I also use it the most often. I keep these in my freezer. So usually when I want a cold drink, I will pull the glass from the freezer. This is pretty much like a plain double old fashioned glass, but it does have this cool imprint on the bottom. And when you look at it on its side, you'll see that the bottom imprint does show through and it's just like a beautiful glittering, you know, rocky crystal type of effect. The next rock glass that I have here is this one. And can you guess where it's from? This is also from Great and Barrel and it is the cousin or sibling of this one. So both of these are from the same line. They both have like the extremely heavy glass bottom with the air bubble down the center. This is also really amazing. It looks, it feels very high quality. The edge is smooth cut, so there's not like a rim around it. So it feels really good to drink out of. And the heavy base just makes it feel very like sturdy and expensive. Both of these are pretty affordable. They're somewhere between like 10 and $15 each. Manhattan break. So good. The next glass that I have is this one right here. This is from a company called the Elon Collective and they manufacture a lot of different barware and glassware focused for the home bartender. And this is just like a beautiful, beautiful glass. It photographs super well and you have all the faceted triangular shapes that just caps the light perfectly. This is probably my favorite of the set that they have, but there's also a few others in the line that are also really unique. There is this one, which has the twisted shape. It looks like someone just like, twisted the glass. The other one that I absolutely love from the line is this simple rock glass. And what I like about this is that the size is just absolutely perfect. It is big enough where if you have a large ice cube, the ice cube barely fits in so that once you start it a little bit with the liquid, it will like settle in perfectly uh, you know, for the entire diameter of the glass. And there's just something very satisfying about having a glass that's small enough to hold like a huge ice cube. The next couple glasses that I have is from another one of my favorite places to shop for glassware. 
and that's CB2. So if you don't know, CB2 is like the sister store of Crate & Barrel. It's kind of a little bit more modern, whereas Crate & Barrel is a little bit more traditional. The style of glassware from CB2 is all ultra modern, and I really love their designs. And not just the glassware, I also go there for some of my like dishware and some other kitchen decorative things. The two items that I have from here that I would consider some of my favorites are these glasses. This is from their Marta line. These are just very basic glasses that uh, there's no frills. They do stack really nicely, which is great uh, if you're concerned about space. And what I really love about these is that they are just super thin. The thin glass is still super sturdy and I haven't really had too many casualties with these. But this one is just like a super short glass, which is sometimes good if you have a large ice cube. It will slightly jet out from the top, but I think it's kind of a cool look. And then this one, I oftentimes use for like drinking water or drinking coffee. Sometimes I use it for cocktails as well. Uh, but for cocktails, I usually like a slightly heavier bottom. The best thing about these glasses is that they are extremely cheap and affordable. And even if it breaks, you can just restock and buy some more. They're also really good for tastings if you want, especially the smaller ones. So if you want to have like a tasting or a mini, mini cocktail, these are really good and you can just have a bunch of them and serve a crowd. The other glasses that I have in CB2 are probably my most used glass out of everything I own. And they are these. These are just two ounce glasses that I believe are just designed for like a shot or sipping something, but I use these for tasting all the time. Every time I'm like experimenting with cocktails and I want to taste it before I make a full batch, I will just mix it in one of these and have it, or if I just want to taste something without necessarily getting out like a clinking glass, I will just pour it in here. Unfortunately, they do not sell these anymore. So CB2 is great because everything is super modern uh, and they always get new things in. But at the same time, they also retire products and I can't not find these anymore. I think the two ounce is just absolutely perfect for tasting things or just like pouring a, you know, like a wee, wee dram or something. <laughs> So I'm hoping they'll maybe come in stock again at some point, but they also have a lot of other types of shot glasses or small glassware that are all like very modern and I recommend checking it out. So in the absence of that, another thing that I really like are these. These are just plastic glasses. I bought like a large stack of 500 of these just on Amazon and these I believe are just one ounce and they are just perfect for tastings or maybe like you have a bunch of people over and you want to do tasting of like 20 different things which is the situation I sometimes find myself in but these are just perfect because they are disposable um, they are like a nice like that crystal cut type of plastic so you can wash it and reuse it if you would like they are just affordable ways where you can do tastings without necessarily washing glassware all night the last items that I will talk about are my spirit glasses. So these are glassware that I use just to drink things neat, whether it's whiskey or rum or mezcal or cognac or anything. So um, the most commonly used one, of course, is the Glen Cane. So most people own Glen Canes that are familiar with it already, so I won't go more into it. But, but did you know that they sell lids? How awesome is that? So I did have to order these from the Glen King website and like pay the shipping associated with it. But uh, this is just really cool. It's like, you know, you didn't finish your drink or maybe you need to go somewhere and finish it later. Just put a top on it. So I love that. I don't really use it that often, but I do like having it and it's a perfect fit and I'm kind of a sucker for things like that. I would say that maybe 80 to 90% of the time I am using a Glen Cane glass for any type of straight spirits. But the other thing that I do want to mention are these Denver and Lily glasses. So I would say that these are kind of my glassware splurge. I told you all the glassware I own are very affordable, usually no more than like 10 to $15 each. Um, uh, but these are the exception. So these are by Denver and Lively, and they are an Australian artisan glassware maker. The company was founded by two designers slash engineers who originally just created a glass because they were looking to give something for family for Christmas. And it was so well received that they expanded their business and now they have a full business with a couple of different, um, different glassware that they produce. The original one that they made was this one. 
this is intended for single malt and it is just does an amazing job at concentrating the aroma when you take a sip. It's much more of an intense aroma than the Glen Cane. I would say if you're for something cast strength, it may not be like the best option because it does kind of burn your nostrils if you're not angling it correctly. But for anything standard proof, it does an amazing job at just concentrating the aroma so you get the most out of it. These are all hand blown glass, so it is just extremely high quality and feels super sturdy in your hand. These retail for about $50 to these $60 each, so it is on the pricier end, but so far I haven't had any casualties, knock on wood. I really love these. I think it's a great investment, especially if you're someone who really enjoys drinking your spirits neat. The next one that they made for whiskey is this one, which is the bourbon glass. This one has a bit of a heavier bottom and it's a little bit more elevated and it is equally sturdy and feels extremely high quality. The glass feels great in your mouth if you like the thinner edge, which I really do. And both of these are fantastic. The most recent one that Denver and Lively came out with is this, which is actually designed for agave spirits. This one was just recently released. One of the owners actually spent a couple years living in Mexico, talking to with a different mezcal producer, learning more about agave spirits in order to um, find the right design for the glassware for it. For traditional mezcal consumption, generally people just drink out of tiny glasses, kind of similar to these. They're called like veladoras. They're actually candle holders, or they'll just have like bowls created from dried gourds that they'll use for the mezcal, but this one is more of like a modern take at what would be a great vehicle in order to really get the most out of the complexities from agave spirits. Even if you don't drink agave spirits, I think this is still just like a really interesting and fun shape for glassware, and it also feels equally high quality. All right, that's it. So that's my set of most commonly used and some of my favorite glassware. Uh, honestly, I'm always on the hunt for more and I would like to upgrade my glassware collection a bit But it's hard to decide what to pick up because I do have limited space So let me know if you have some favorites in your collection that you really recommend It could be at any price point um, But just things that are like tried and true that you constantly reach for and you enjoy you know, drinking out of all the time as always, if you like these type of videos, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification button so you can get notified when I do film a new video. And I'll see you next time. Bye. P.S. Please make one of these Manhattans. Get some Rittenhouse 100, some Puta Mess, Angostura Bitters, and make one. It is so good. I think I'm gonna go make another one. Bye.